going to be talking about sports now. Virginia Sports with Chris Graham of the Augusta Free Press and Virginia Sports Online. A little college basketball action we'll talk about for just a couple seconds. And also towards the end of this interview, we'll touch uh, base as we'll be uh, talking about uh, this for the next couple weeks. Uh, the Orange Bowl, Virginia Tech and Stanford. Before we talk about uh, college football and Virginia Tech and Stanford, uh, Chris, let's touch base really college basketball, both men's and women's college basketball. First of all, the men. Well, UVA had a, had a close uh, call last night, uh, just sliding by Norfolk State by a single point. I think Norfolk State went into that ball game with a record of 1-7. And, and you can only assume that uh, the UVA took them lightly and, uh, and didn't show up. Uh, showed up enough to get the one-point victory, and that was it. Well, yeah, and then you have the issue, and it's, it's a big one. It was maybe masked a bit by that uh, that win over Oregon last Friday night. You know, Oregon team that had played Missouri tough on the road, and and uh, had a 7-3 record coming in. Virginia wins that game without Mike Scott, uh, the leading scorer and rebounder on the team, and a guy who would probably be a first-team All-ACC performer if they were voting done today. And uh, Virginia still without Mike Scott maybe for another week or so. He had arthroscopic surgery on an ankle that uh, he had injured in practice, and some cartilage had to be removed. Not serious surgery, but uh, uh, enough to keep him out of action for the next week or two. And uh, in the meantime, Virginia, you know, doesn't have an inside uh, answer, really. You know, Mike Scott is the inside game, 17 points and 10 rebounds per game. And without him in there, uh, there's, there's just not much inside. So they don't get much consistent inside play, and they have to rely on their perimeter game. And they, they did well against Oregon uh, last Friday night in that 63-48 win. But you could see, uh, you know, Oregon didn't, of course, have a chance to prepare for Virginia with a four-guard lineup. Uh, heading into that one because uh, Tony Bennett played, uh, you know, kind of coy and, and didn't go into detail at all about Mike Scott's injury. In fact, the media relations department handed us pieces of paper about five minutes before tip-off saying Mike Scott wouldn't be playing, uh, and that's how we found out. So, um, so, but Nor Norfolk State had a chance to prepare, and Norfolk State got a player back that had, they had been missing for the first few games of the season. It was pretty key to their efforts. And, uh, and so you add all that up, you know, Virginia maybe lackluster effort on their part. And, and yeah, you know, the Cavs, I was following that score. I was at another game last night, but I was following that score on uh, Stat Tracker. And Virginia led, or was behind most of the second half, you know, down by five at a couple different junctures in the second half. And it and, and pulls out the win. Well, you, you can say, well, one, that's not good for Virginia. They almost lost to a team that has one win this season. You can also say, hey, sometimes those things happen. And at least they got the win. And, uh, you know, you'd rather have the W ugly than a, a ugly loss. And so Virginia gets the ugly win, and they live to tell the tale another day. They have Seattle coming into town tomorrow night, and we'll see if the Cavs can, can bounce back and put a better effort in against Seattle. And, of course, we've had a few ACC games already, but, I mean, obviously we're getting closer and closer to, to getting to the meat of the ACC conference schedule. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And we're seeing teams, uh, you know, I guess preparing in their own ways. North Carolina uh, on Saturday playing a tough game against Texas uh, in, in Greensboro. So not a home game technically, but pretty much a home game. You know, anytime the, the, the team of North Carolina plays in the state of North Carolina, it's a home game for them. Uh, and, and Texas, uh, a top 25 team, Virginia, uh, excuse me, North Carolina, gave them a good game. You know, Carolina started the season as a top 10 team and they have not played like a top 10 team this year. Uh, I think a win in that game could have actually propelled them back in the top 25. But Texas pulls out the close win in a good game, and I think uh, probably a good thing for both those teams, even though for the ACC it's another loss. Uh, we still have one team. I say we, speaking for the ACC, we still have just one team in the top 25, Duke at number one. Uh, outside of Duke, uh, you know, the two teams that were expected to, to fight for second and third, Virginia Tech and North Carolina, have struggled this year. Uh, and we've not seen anybody else emerge right now. You have, you have some good records. I think Florida State has a good record. Haven't played anybody preseason. Um, you know, a couple other teams have some, some good records, but, but really nobody standing out. In fact, only one other team even getting that I've seen any votes in the top 25, even in the others receiving votes, and that's Boston College, the 9-2 record. And uh, I don't think they have any, anything to hang their hat on right now. So the ACC, uh, rarely going into the conference play, uh, will be about these teams defining themselves. And, uh, you know, I think it could be a tough year for the ACC. The non-conference schedule, we've not really shown ourselves to be, uh, you know, worthy of multiple bids to the NCAA tournament in terms of, you know, four or five or six or seven like we're used to. This could be the kind of year where the ACC gets two or three bids and has to be happy with it. Yeah, very thrilling women's basketball, to say the least. JMU hosting UVA. The second time this year JMU's women have hosted an ACC team. They lost to Duke by 17 earlier this year. And it looked like for most of the game last night that uh, Virginia would repeat that. They had a double-digit lead most of the second half. And with uh, about four minutes to go, still led by 13 points. 
But then Dawn Evans went crazy. She had 20 in the first half and uh, was pretty much the whole JMU offense. Well, then in the second half, uh, and, and down the stretch, she scores 13 points in the final four minutes. And what you see there is, is Dawn Evans, as a, as a senior, a player who's led this team to a couple of incident double-A tournaments. Uh, as a, she's averaging 26 points a game this year. But uh, I think this, of all her efforts, was her best effort, her most sublime effort. Because 13 points in the final four minutes, Virginia's up 13, and, and JMU takes the lead uh, with one of three-pointer by Dawn Evans off a high screen and roll with 34 seconds ago and holds on for a thrilling win. Only about... I'd say about 2,500 to 3,000 people at the game last night, but it was a loud atmosphere there on press row. All that sound collecting down on the floor of the convo. And a uh, huge win for JMU. Kenny Brooks and his team uh, had struggled at, have struggled at times this year. They're 6-5 and five now with the win, but this could be a, a signature win, a home win over an ACC team that uh, could be very important for these dudes as they uh, head into CAA play. Okay, really quick, uh, I know you wanted to touch base uh, on uh, the Orange Bowl. Uh, Virginia Tech and Stanford were getting a Well, uh, I guess really still, you know, we're still feeling our way through this. The teams are, are, are getting back into the swing of things practice-wise. We're within two weeks of the game now. So, uh, you know, now we can start talking football again instead of talking about the, uh, the stuff about football, I guess you can say. And, and Virginia Tech's going to have their hands full. You know, their, their past defense is going to have their hands full with Andrew Luck, a guy who, if he comes out early next year, would probably be the number one pick in the draft. And, and that pass offense of Stanford with, uh, with Jim Harbaugh leading the way, uh, the, the coach uh, uh, and his, his wizardry out there in the Pac-10, he's turned the program around pretty quickly. That Stanford program had really struggled for years and years, and they've had a run of coaches who've, you know, who've kind of used the excuse that you hear sometimes out of Virginia and Duke football coaches. Hey, you know, we're an academic school and we can't recruit and win in football regularly. Jim Harbaugh's won regularly out there, produced some good NFL players, and, and kept his kids in class and everything else. And this Stanford team is a team number four in the country. Uh, that thinks that, you know, if a couple of bounces have gone their way, they could be playing in that national championship game themselves. And so uh, they've got something to prove, you know. That's, that's what these kind of bowl games come down to, is who's got, who's got more to prove. I think Virginia Tech, even though they're coming in uh, on the outside of the top ten looking in, they've got something to prove too. You know, they've been, they've been promoting that 212 uh, idea, you know, the, the, the temperature at which water boils, but also the two losses to start the season, and if they can win this Orange Bowl, they'll have won 12 straight to finish the season. A team that came into the season with national championship aspirations. And I think the Hokies think that a win in this game would, uh, would, would you know, kind of make those, uh, those justifications from earlier in the season, you know, stand up, I guess. You know, you, you can't take back that you lost to Boise State in the last minute. You can't take back the debacle against JMU. But what you can do is come back from 0-2 and, uh, and, and really prove yourself in that way. So the Hokies have something to prove. The, uh, the, the Stanford Cardinal has something to prove. Should be a good yeah, game. I was going to say real quick, I'm guessing Stanford wants to, wants to show one that they really belong on the big stage. Oh, yeah, yeah. They want to show that, too. Yeah, because, you know, uh, the Pac-10 was pretty solid this year. I don't think there's any question about that. But, you know, those of us here on the East Coast, we still think that our football is the best. You know, the SEC and, and the Big Ten and the, uh, I guess, in the Midwest out there in the Big 12. ACC this year was down. But, you know, we think on the, on the east side of the Mississippi that we play the best football in the country. And the Pac-10 teams that play at night, you know, we don't watch a lot of their games. We don't see a lot of their – we just see their highlights. And we see that they score a lot of points out there. Uh, and we, we, you know, sometimes doubt their, uh, you know, the quality of their schedules. Well, the Pac-10 was pretty tough this year. I think Stanford, you know, being number four in the country but number two in the Pac-10, uh, they want to they wanna justify to everybody that, hey, we didn't just play a bunch of West Coast teams that don't play defense. You know, we're going to go against a team in Virginia Tech that a lot of people know that's a brand name of college football. Uh, you know, Bud Foster's defense hasn't been what it – in this year, what it's been in past years, but I, th I still think Stanford wants to go out there and say, hey, this is a team coming in on an 11 game winning streak and we're going to beat them. So, uh, yeah, Stanford does have a lot to prove in this game. Okay, Chris, what do we look for in the coming days from both the Augusta Free Press and uh, Virginia Sports Online? Well, uh, from, from a sports standpoint, uh, you know, there's the uh, Virginia Seattle game. JMU also has a game Wednesday night heading into the Christmas break, and then it'll be quiet for a few days, and then next week we'll get back in the swing of things. Virginia has a couple of tough non-conference games coming up at home. Uh, I know Iowa State's next week, for example, so uh, and then LSU next weekend. So uh, a little bit of a lull after the midweek this week, but uh, but then getting back in the swing, and we'll see uh, what we can you know conjure up as far as uh, more pregame coverage of the Orange Bowl as well. Okay, Chris Graham with the Augusta Free Press and Virginia Sports Online, and we will come back for more online here on Classic Country AM fourteen fifty on this Tuesday morning. Right after this.